Okay, this is the second video of our uh, study in Second Peter. Uh, so we're going to start out with uh, our first verse. This is Simon Peter. We've identified him as the author. He says, A servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. An apostle was one who was sent forth by the very direction of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now one thing he's addressing here is he's addressing a Gentile audience. Uh, the Gentiles have come to this precious faith that uh, the Jewish nation, nation has known all, all along. Uh, this precious faith is uh, more precious than diamonds, more precious than silver, more precious than gold. It's more precious than anything. It's invaluable, this, this faith is. And so uh, by this faith, uh, we, uh, with us through the righteousness of God, we're brought to righteousness in through God um, by Jesus Christ our Savior. This righteousness is attributed much like justification. We're made right in the image of Almighty God. Uh, so through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now, uh, what he says here, he calls uh, Jesus two names here, God and Savior. Now, it is a fallacy. It is a biblical fallacy. If you attribute anything uh, to Jesus less than identity with the divine. Uh, in other words, if you are, if you are biblically in, in the word, you cannot escape it because John the Apostle in his gospel writes, in the beginning was the word, the word being Jesus. The word was with God. The word was God. The same thing we find here from Simon Peter. He says that Jesus Christ was God and Savior. He was of the same essence of God. He was not less than God. He was God. He was God incarnate. Uh, God come in the flesh. And he also calls Jesus our Savior. Uh, he came to save our, save our souls uh, from the life of wickedness and life of sinfulness and to make us into his image. We find in the second verse, grace and peace. This is a common greeting. Grace is favor. God's favor towards us. You know, the fact is, folks, God loves us. You know, a lot of times we get on and there, there are preachers who preach nothing but hellfire and brimstone and, and all of this. Listen, I th in the, that is in the Bible. I'm not saying it's not in the Bible. But grace is something that we need to concentrate a lot more on than anything else. God's almighty grace that he has for us. Uh, grace is favor. He has bestowed upon us his favor. So it's his grace and peace, that tranquility that we can only find through a relationship with God, knowing that our relationship with him is in right standing. So grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, and that knowledge is not just an intellectual acknowledgement, but more of a learning of the person of God experientially. It's not enough to say, hey, I believe in God, and hey, I believe in, 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 uh, in the resurrection, and I believe in all these doctrines. It's not enough. You have to experience it. You have to allow him into your life. Um, uh, but grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Uh, according to his divine power hath given us all things. So in other words, he's given us the tools, he's given us the tools to live a righteous life uh, through our faith and through the very word uh, that we read from, uh, many, some of, many of the documents were already completed uh, by this time. Uh, many of the letters of Paul, if not all the letters of Paul were completed. The letter of James was completed uh, by this time of this writing. The Gospel of Mark was most likely completed. And the Hebrew version of Matthew uh, was already completed. Uh, now, depending on when you think Mark and Matthew wrote the well, when Mark wrote his Greek gospel, and when Matthew wrote his Greek gospel, you know, Matthew incorporated some of Mark's gospel in his Greek gospel, not in the Hebrew version, but in the Greek version. Uh, but it's very well possible that even the Greek Matthew wrote may have been uh, in existence by that time. So you have a developing New Testament by this time. You already have the scriptures of the Hebrew Bible, and you have uh, this as well. Uh, so he's given you the tools to live a holy life 
and that's what Peter is saying whereby are you given and whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises the promises of God are spectacular the promise he's given us of having eternal life the promise he's given us in having a relationship with him uh, the promise of peace the promise of joy the promise of understanding uh, all these things are, are wonderful promises that he's given us in his word uh, great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. This doesn't mean that you become God, but, but and essentially you have a relationship with God and the Spirit of God comes down in your life, so you have a part of that divine nature in you. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You know, we're on a rescue boat. There's a good gospel hymn that says, I'm going to take a trip on the good old gospel ship and go sailing through the air. And that's what it's talking about. The fact that we are a part of that rescue mission that God has given us to pull us up out of the depths of the, the floods of sin, the, the, the floods of, of corruption, and set us on a new path in the path to heaven. Verse 5, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. Now what Peter's going to say, we're going to go through this, and Peter's going to give some building blocks some building blocks that begin with faith. Faith produces all these things, but it's like a chain reaction. Faith produces one thing, that produces another, and it's like a chain reaction. But it has to start with faith. A faith is a relationship, the trust that you have in your life with Almighty God uh, through Jesus Christ. But add to your faith virtue. Now, virtue is excellence or goodness. Faith produces goodness. A true godly faith produces goodness. And that's how you can know that a person truly has a relationship with God. If it's a true relationship and it's a true commitment, then they're going to produce goodness. If that faith is not legitimate, then it won't be, there won't be goodness there. But faith produces goodness. And to virtue or goodness, knowledge. Uh, knowledge is a, a revelation of spiritual truths that we have in his word. And I hear my phone going off, so we'll be right back here in just a moment. Join us back with our third video as we continue to talk about uh, these truths. Hold on just one moment.